यूक्लिडियन रिंग और यूक्लिडियन डोमेन डेफिनेशन लेट आर बी एन इंटीग्रल डोमेन दैट मीन्स आर बी ए कॉम्पिटेटिव रिंग विदाउट जीरो डिवाइजर्स बिकॉज एन इंटीग्रल डोमेन इज कॉम्पिटेटिव दिख रहा है ये नेटवर्क चला जा रहा है बार बार लेट आर बी एन इंटीग्रल डोमेन इट मीन आर इज ए कॉम्पिटेटिव रिंग विदाउट जीरो डिवाइसर्स देन दिस आर इज सेट टू बी एक्लिडियन रिंग इफ टू एवरी नॉन जीरो एलिमेंट ए इन आर वी कैन असाइन ए नॉन नेगेटिव इंटीजर डी ए सी दिस डी एज एन इंटीजर बट इट इज ए नॉन नेगेटिव इंटीजर सच दैट देर आर सर्टन कंडीशन let us see those conditions such that first for all ab in r both non zero both ab are non zero dab is greater than or equal to da first condition and second for any ab in r and b non zero there exists q and small r in capital r such that a is equal to q into b plus r where either r is zero or dr is your less than db so this is the definition of euclidean domain this this second part means this is your division algorithm you would have under uh, studied this in your number theory the second part of the our definition is known as division algorithm we do not assign a value to d0 thus da will remain undefined when a is equal to 0 this da will be called d value of a and da must be some non negative integer for every non zero element a in r now see there are some examples which are euclidean rings see example 1 this says that the ring of integers is a euclidean ring see its proof or solution let i plus dot i may set of integers plus is a operation and dot is also a operation means addition and multiplication be the ring of integers where i is equal to so on minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 2, so it, it is containing all the integers let the d function on the non zero elements of i be defined as da is equal to modulus of a where a is a non zero and a is an integer now for Zero not equal to a means for non-zero a in I, modulus of a is a non-negative integer. Thus, we have assigned a non-negative integer to every non-zero element a in I. Why? Because d a is d a is modulus of a, which is non-negative. Now d minus five will be modulus of minus five, so it is equal to five. d minus one will be modulus of minus one, it is equal to one. d four is equal to mod four, it is equal to four. etc further if there are two integers ab in i and both are non zero then we know that modulus of ab it can be written as mod a into mod b but modulus of ab will be or greater than or equal to mod a why because this modulus of a is greater than or equal to 1 if b is a non zero integer so this inequality is true it means d of ab is greater than or equal to d of a so first condition of euclidean domain is satisfied next finally we know that if a is an integer means a belongs to i and b a non zero b in i then there exist two integers q and r such that a can be written as q into b plus r where this zero less than or equal to or less than modulus of b this we know from the division algorithm yeah. for uh, to the number theory that is where either r is zero or one is less than or equal to r less than modulus b or that is whether where either r is zero or dr is less than db see here since r is your positive so d it can be written as dr and dr is less than db it should be noted that db is your mod b and if r is a positive integer then r is equal to mod r is equal to dr therefore this this proves your second condition of euclidean domain 
see this is your second condition for euclidean domain so the ring of integers is a euclidean ring or euclidean domain this problem is solved there is another problem see the ring of polynomials or a field is a euclidean ring several times this question was asked see its solution let fx be the ring of polynomials over a field f we need to show that this is a euclidean ring let the d function on the non zero polynomials in fx be defined as d of fx is equal to degree fx suppose fx is your quadratic then d of fx will be 2 f if fx is of degree 3 then d of fx will be 3 and so on for all zero not equal to fx means for all non non zero fx in capital fx now if a non zero fx belongs to capital fx then degree fx is a non negative integer no doubt it will be a non negative integer further we have assigned a non negative integer to every non zero element fx in capital fx now take two functions fx gx in capital fx and both non zero assume that both are non zero polynomials then degree fx into gx can be written as degree fx plus degree gx why suppose fx is your f is your of 3 degree and g is of 4 degree then fx into gx it will be of 3 into 4 Three plus four means seven degree of degree seven. So this is your relation. It implies that degree f x into degree into g x is greater than or equal to degree f x. Why? Because this degree g x is your greater than or equal to zero. So this is your nothing but d f x into g x, and it is greater than d f x. Why? Because d of f x is defined as degree of f x. So this is your degree d f x g x greater than or equal to d f x. This first condition is proved. Next, second. Finally, we know that if f x small f is in capital f x and a non-zero g x belongs to capital f x, then there exist two polynomials q x and r x in capital f x such that f x is equal to q x g x plus r x. With this, r x is your remainder. Whether either r x is zero or degree of r x is less than degree of g x. Why? Because Actually, we are dividing uh, this f x by g x. So this is this is the quotient, this is the divisor, this is dividend, and this is your remainder. That is where either r x is zero or d r x is less than d g x. So this proves your second condition, as the ring of polynomials or a field is a Euclidean ring. So this problem is also solved. There is there is one more example. See this one. Every field is a Euclidean ring. See its solution. Let f be any field. You need to show that this f is a Euclidean ring. Let the d function on the non-zero elements of f be defined as d of a is equal to zero. First, we need to define a function a d function. Only then we can proceed. To prove that it is a Euclidean ring for all non-zero a in F, thus we have assigned the integer zero to every non-zero element in F. See, this is a is non-zero and d a is zero, so this integer zero is assigned. If a and b are two non-zero elements in F, then a into b is also a non-zero element in F. Then we have d a b is equal to zero. Why? Because a into b is non-zero, and we have defined for a non-zero a d a is equal to zero. So d a b will be zero. Means it is equal to d of a. So it can be written as d of a b is greater than or equal to d a. This equality is satisfied from this one. Finally, so this first condition is satisfied. If a belongs to F and a non-zero b belongs to F, then we can write is a is equal to a b inverse into b plus zero. Since b is non-zero, so b inverse is justified. 
So it is equal to A is equal to Q into B plus R means uh, substitute Q for AB inverse, where Q is your AB inverse and R is your zero. So this is second condition is also satisfied. Hence, every field is a Euclidean ring. So this problem is also solved. There is another example. Uh, we will see some of its parts. The ring of Gaussian integers is a Euclidean ring. This question has been asked in several university examinations. Field solution, the ring of Gaussian integers is a Euclidean ring. Let G plus dot be the ring of Gaussian integers. Means G is equal with two operations, plus and dot, means addition and multiplication. Where this G is given as uh, complex numbers X plus I, Y, such that X, Y belongs to I, means X and Y both are integers. Let the D function on the non-zero elements of G be defined as Dx plus I, Y is equal to X square plus Y square. We are defining this D function as, as X square plus Y square for all non-zero X plus I, Y in G. X plus I, Y is not equal to zero plus I, zero means this complex number is non-zero. Now, if this X plus I, Y is a non-zero element of capital G, then X square plus Y square is also a non-negative integer. So we have assigned a non-negative integer to every non-zero element of G. Now see if X plus I, Y and M plus I, N, we select two non-zero elements of G means two complex numbers, then D X plus I, Y into M plus I, N is equal to D multiply these two complex numbers. So it will have X, M minus N, Y plus I into M, Y plus X, M. Now this will be what? Uh, they use this definition of D function f plus d x plus i y x square plus y square. So this will be x m minus n y plus m y plus x n whole uh, x m minus n y square plus m y plus x n square as per the definition of D. So this is equal to x m minus n y whole square plus m y plus x n whole square. So this is your x square m square plus n square y square plus m square y square plus x square n square. The rest part from this minus 2xm and y and from this plus 2my xn both will cancel each other. So this is equal to x square plus y square into m square plus n square means it is greater than or equal to x square plus y square. Why? Because this m square plus n square is greater than or equal to 1. So dx plus i y into m plus i n is greater than or equal to dx plus i y. It means first part is proved. Now to show the, the existence of division algorithm, let alpha belongs to G and beta be a non-zero element of G. And let X is, alpha is equal to X plus I, Y and beta is equal to given as M plus I, N. Define a complex number lambda by lambda is equal to alpha plus alpha by beta. So it is X plus I, Y by M plus I, N. Multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate complex of this number. So it is equal to x plus i y into m minus i n by m square plus n square because it is m plus i n into m minus i n is m square plus n square. So this can be written as p plus i q where p and q both are rational numbers. Here this lambda is not necessarily a Gaussian integer. Why? Because this p and q both are rational though both need not be integers. Now division by beta is also possible since beta is non zero. Let p dash and q dash be the nearest integers to small p and q. Then modulus of p minus p dash is less than or equal to half, and modulus of q minus q dash is less than or equal to half. Take lambda dash is your p dash plus i into q dash. Then lambda dash is a Gaussian integer because lambda, p dash and q dash both are integers. So lambda is equal to alpha by beta means alpha is equal to lambda beta or alpha is equal to lambda dash beta plus lambda beta minus lambda dash beta means add lambda dash beta and subtract lambda dash beta. So alpha is equal to lambda dash beta plus lambda minus lambda dash beta. Now see here alpha beta and lambda dash all of them are Gaussian integers means this alpha beta and lambda dash they are Gaussian integers therefore this one will also be a Gaussian integer. 
Now, if P and Q are integers, then P is equal to P dash, Q is equal to P dash. So, lambda minus lambda dash is equal to P minus P dash plus I into Q minus Q dash. So, it is 0 plus I0. Thus, lambda minus lambda dash into beta is equal to 0 plus I0. If P and Q both are not integers, then lambda minus lambda dash into beta is a non zero Gaussian integer. And in that case, we have D lambda minus lambda dash beta is equal to D P minus P dash plus I Q minus Q dash into M plus I M. This uh, beta is your M plus I M. So this is equal to uh, P minus P dash square plus Q minus Q dash square into M square plus N square. So this is equal to P minus P dash square plus Q minus Q dash square into D beta. Means it is less than or equal to 1.4 plus 1.4 into d beta. Because since p d minus p dash is less than 1.2, so its square will be less than or equal to 1 by 4. It means it is equal to 1 by 2 d beta, which will be less than d beta. Since it is half of d beta. Thus alpha is equal to lambda dash beta plus lambda minus lambda dash beta, where lambda dash and lambda minus lambda dash beta, they are Gaussian integers. And either lambda minus lambda dash beta is equal to 0. Or we have D lambda minus lambda dash beta is less than D beta. So this proves our second condition for, the, for this ring of Gaussian integers to be Euclidean ring. Hence the ring of Gaussian integers is a Euclidean ring. So this is all about for today. And if you have any query, uh, you can send me your messages here. And also the whole lecture will be available on YouTube. So you can go to the YouTube, there is a comment section, you just give me some comments.